Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our briefing. Today, we'll be hearing from public health. We'll also be hearing about our new Carts in Parks program and our Madlet uh, program, which is a new uh, downtown entertainment thing, which I'm very excited about. Uh, just a few notes before we get started. One, it is still uh, National Mental Health Awareness Month, particularly for BIPOC folks. So uh, please uh, avail yourself of the resources in our community. There's many mental health resources available for folks and encourage people to take care of their mental health at all times. It's also Disability Pride Month. So happy Pride Month to all of our differently abled folks and uh, encourage everybody to learn about Disability Pride Month and the history behind that uh, when you get a chance. And now I'm going to turn it over to Janelle Heinrich, our Director of Public Health, Madison, Dane County. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here again to share an update on the state of COVID in Dane County. Lately, you may be hearing a lot of news about the Delta variant and the impact on COVID activity nationwide. Overall, we are seeing steady levels of cases in Dane County. While at, at the state level, the case activity is ticking up slightly. In Dane County, our seven day average of cases per day is 10.3, up slightly from two weeks ago, but as you can see on our dashboard, still stable. This is great news for Dane County, as we are nowhere near the levels we saw last fall, pre-vaccine, when we were seeing more than 400 cases per day. About 0.9% of tests are coming back positive right now. An additional promising data point Cases in children remain very low. Recently, we saw a two-week stretch with zero cases among five to seven-year-olds. As we monitor the impact of the Delta variant nationwide, we are paying careful attention to COVID activity and associated data in Dane County, as we know the prevalence of the variant is rising statewide. A reminder, the Delta variant is a natu naturally occurring mutation of the COVID-19 virus. Data shows that it spreads more easily than the original COVID-19 virus we were introduced to uh, more than a year and a half ago. Most recently, the State Lab of Hygiene reports that over half of the COVID tests that they are sequencing indicate that they are the Delta variant. Good news, though, we know what works to prevent more illness. Our best line of defense against this variant and all strains of COVID right now is getting vaccinated. Dane County is one of the most vaccinated counties in the country, which gives us more community level protection against Delta than places with lower vaccination levels. Places with low vaccination coverage will likely see more COVID cases because Delta can spread so easily. And when there are surges in COVID cases, hospitalizations do tend to follow. This is why it is so important to keep up our vaccination efforts. The more vaccinated our communities are, the more we'll be able to stop the spread of the Delta variant and any of variants that may be waiting to emerge in the future. So while it is possible we may see the impact of this more transmissible variant here in Dane County, we have the tools to prevent it. All vaccines currently available to us are effective against COVID and preventing the illness and greatly reducing the likelihood of severe outcomes and which, which are hospitalization and death. When it comes to vaccinations, more than 700,000 doses have been administered to Dane County residents. And we're inching closer to some big milestones with 69% of the, our county population that now has at least one dose and 79% of all those who are eligible, meaning those who are 12 years of age and older, now has, um, have at least one dose. We continue to offer vaccination and testing services at our East Washington and South Madison offices. You can find locations and hours of operation on our website and sign up for your appointment on publichealthmdc.com. We also continue to collaborate with business owners, community groups, and event organizers on a variety of mobile vaccination clinics throughout Dane County. And you can find information on when, where to find those on our website as well. 
We know that this illness is not going completely away completely. We will have to live with it. What we don't know yet is what it means to live with it on an individual or community basis over the long haul. We're only a year and a half into this illness and we continue to learn the best ways to manage it as a population. But we are in such a better position today compared to one year ago. We know more about this virus, we have lower levels of activity, we have more vaccine coverage, and we know that these vaccines are effective and our public health and healthcare systems are better prepared than ever to respond if you are ill. We may never get to zero cases, but that doesn't mean we're giving up on getting as many people vaccinated as possible because we know that the single most effective thing that a person can do to protect themselves and their loved ones and prevent the illness from spreading and from variants to getting from developing is getting vaccinated. Our fate is in our hands. So the fact that everyone gets vaccinated, the better off we all are. Thank you. Thank you, Janelle, and I'll add my encouragement as well. Uh, please, please, please visit publichealthmdc.com. Find out where you can get vaccinated if you're not already. Lots of options around our community. Um, of course, you can also go to pharmacies. You can go to your primary care provider. Um, so please, please, if you haven't or if you know anyone who is not yet vaccinated, please encourage them to, to take advantage of those resources. Uh, next, we are turning towards two things uh, that are happening this summer that are very exciting. The first is our Carts in Parks program, and we're going to hear from Megan Blakehorst, our City Vending Coordinator. Hi, good morning. My name is Megan Blakehorst, and I am the Street Vending Coordinator for the City of Madison in our Office of Business Resources and in our Economic Development Division. On behalf of the Parks Department, or excuse me, the Parks Division, Economic Development Division in the City of Madison, I am thrilled to announce the launch of our Carts and Parks Vending Pilot Program this summer and rolling into late fall and potentially winter, depending on how the program runs. Uh, the program will provide a new daily vending program for carts to vend in approximately 20 parks around the city of Madison. It's, got, it's created to support community-driven micro-vending opportunities and micro-vending markets, reduce the barriers to vending in the city parks, and provide greater food access and enhance our community gathering spaces. The Carts and Parks Vending Pilot Program has four paths vendors may take. They may be eligible to vend in some or all of these opportunities depending on the type of mobile unit they have, health department licenses, and permissions from community organizers that are leading some of our community events. These paths include our daily vending program, which has a guaranteed sales program, and I will touch on that in a minute, community-led events, park-sponsored events, and neighborhood resource team-supported or sponsored events. We are working we are also working on opportunities to provide affordable access to food through $5 food cart nights, free community meals at selected parks. These, deta these details are still in the planning stage, and we will focus on supporting community-based events that are already being planned by residents and our community organizers. Some program highlights include participating carts will be assigned to one or more parks to vend during the duration of the program to provide consistency uh, for both the customer and the vendor. Daily food vendors, vendors are eligible to participate in our guaranteed sales program. Parks vending fees were, will be waived for participants. I would also like to note that vendors must sign up to participate in the program before they will be able to participate and be assigned a site and a park. I do want to touch that street vending fees have also been waived for our food cart vendors, art and craft vendors, sidewalk cafes, merchant vendors, and part of our streetery program. So we are making a commitment to our vendors and our small businesses. The vendor sign-up was sent out this morning and I, uh, to our currently licensed uh, city food carts and food trucks. We anticipate that there will be a strong list of permitted vendors to kick off our program on July 25th at selected parks. Our rollout of this program will be gradual as vendors in our community are, in our community are still learning of this opportunity. And some of our long-standing food cart operators are slowly coming out of hibernation due to COVID and new vendors are contacting our office daily. So we're looking forward to new, uh, new vendors on the scene this summer. 
I have worked with my colleagues Kelly Lamberty and Kelly Post and our parks operations staff to select the initial set of parks that we will launch our daily vending program in. We, looked in, we took into consideration geographic locations the parks, uh, of the parks to ensure that we had representation on the north, south, east, west, and central parts of the city. We also considered park amenities such as bathrooms, parking, park shelters, beaches, athletic reservations, etc. Additionally, we focused on parks within cities that have neighborhood resource teams or other city-sponsored events, such as Sina Davis movie nights in the park. Vending will be open to participating food carts Monday through Friday to ensure that vendors have an opportunity to vend in a variety of parks during different hours and different days. We have predetermined shifts that vendors will be assigned. Based on the information provided by carts and truck operators, it was determined that generally three to four hour shifts are what uh, is appropriate for daily vending. These uh, hours include, and um, excuse me, these are separate from special events that you might see, such as Madlet that we'll hear about in a minute. Um, these shifts will be from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m., 11 a.m. till 2 p.m., 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., and 7 p.m. till 10 p.m. At, at the parks that I'll list in a minute. Vendors will initially be able to sign up for these shifts at the parks they're interested in, and then they will be assigned a site assignment and also connected with a scheduling app. So if they need to move from a, or cancel a park date or find something else, we'll be able to continue to have consistency in those spaces. Now I am excited to announce which parks will be the kickoff for our program. We have Bowman Park, Brittingham Park near the playground equipment, Demetrol, Elver Park, Esther Beach, Goodman Pool, Highstead Park, James Madison Park, McPike Park near the skate park on that side, um, Ulbrick Park uh, near the beer garden, Olin Park, Penn Park, Rindell Park, Rennebaum, Sandburg, Sycamore, Tenney near the, uh, near the beach, Vilas also near the beach, Warner Park, Warner Park Beach, Worthington Park, and we are looking into the logistics of Law Park. The City of Madison has also been awarded a $50,000 grant for Streets for Pandemic Response through the National Association of City Transportation Officials in partnership with Bloomberg Philanthropies as part of the commitment to, supply, excuse me, to provide short-term funding and technical assistance to cities as we move forward. Madison is one of only 10 cities around North America that received this grant. And we are very excited to be able to use these funds to help support our guaranteed sales program. This program includes, is intended to bridge the gap between vending locations when they get started and when customers know and are consistently coming. It is one of the challenges that we know vendors have been facing as they try to establish new locations. We are confident that this program will provide security for vendors to participate in this new opportunity as well as provide consistency for our customers and our community. We are excited to also be working with community-led uh, events. Our Carts and Parks program will support these event uh, organizers that are interested in micro-vendor markets throughout the city and city parks. We are honored to be working with the Latino Chamber of Commerce and the Ujamaa Business Network, uh, part of EOTO, Culturally Rooted. I want to give a shout out to Jessica and Soshi from the Latino Chamber, as well as Tara from EOTO, and Ujama Business Network for their ongoing support and up, uh, for our up-and-coming entrepreneurs, our community, and existing businesses. It has been a pleasure to work with these women to focus on economic independence for our operators as well as community development. These events are planned to kick off uh, for both the Latino Chamber and Ujama on uh, July 23rd from 4 to 8 at Reynolds Park will be the first Ujama Community Market and on July 25th from 10 a.m. till 3 p.m., Penn Park uh, will host the Latino Chamber Markets. We will be sharing a full list of calendar of events on our social media pages and our website soon. We will continue to connect with other community organizers that we haven't connected with yet to support each organization based on the needs of the group. Through the funds at the NACDO grant, it will support a variety in, in a variety of ways, including receiving funding to do organization, fee waivers, education, and guidance through the logistics and promotions of events. The, need for, the needs will depend on the needs of the operator and the organizer, and the program is intended to help vendors purchase, is not intended to help vendors purchase equipment, but rather opening up opportunities for education 
uh, for potential vendors and what they need to operate as well as remove the barriers that have been in place that make it difficult or cost prohibitive for vendors to operate in city parks. To apply to the Carts and Parks program, you can uh, email me at mblake-horst at cityofmadison.com and we can send you the link for that. Given that this is a pilot program, however, our po hours, parks, locations, and dates are subject to change. Uh, we will be launching a website soon that will have the application, guidelines, calendars of events, as well as a list of our daily vendors and which parks you can find them at and which hours you can uh, find them there. You will be able to see up-to-date information on city social media channels, including the Parks Division Facebook page and our Street Vending Instagram, at Street Vending Madison. This program will not be a success, however, without community participation. The food cart vendors need customers to operate. We invite you to check out the full list of carts in parks, grab your family, friends, neighbors, coworkers, and spend some time enjoying our beautiful city parks in your neighborhood or adventure around the city and check out a new park that you haven't been to, grab a meal, and soak up the season. Again, for any questions, you can contact me, M. Blakehorst, at cityofmadison.com. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in a city park soon. Thank you, Megan. I am looking forward to having a food cart meal in a park very soon. It's a great program. I'm very excited about it. Uh, now I'm happy to bring up Rob Franklin from our Madison Public Library, but who is here today rather as Rob DZ, the organizer of our fantastic new MadLit program. Rob? Cool. Hello. Uh, my name is Rob. I am here to talk about a exciting uh, event series that we are doing at the top of State Street. It is called Mad Lit. Um, it is an eight-week series that started on July 2nd and runs through October 2nd. Uh, the idea of Mad Lit is to bring a more diverse and inclusive uh, situation downtown, and we do that through music, through visual art, and through small business pop-ups. Um, so we had our first event on July 2nd, and we were very fortunate that we had right around 300 people show up um, through the course of the evening. Uh, as you can see through some of the slides, we had, it was very fam uh, fr family friendly events, so we, we definitely were appreciative of that. Uh, different crowds were able to come through and participate. Uh, young and old, so so everyone is welcome. One of the one of the big things about Mad Lit is that we try to do different types of music um, each week. So, for example, uh, we had R and B the first week. This week, this coming Friday on July 16th, we'll have, we'll have Orchestra South Soul be there as well. Um, one of the highlights we had DJ Ace there, and we were able to actually do the cha cha slide in the middle of the 100 block of State Street. And for me, that was that was pretty moving because it was people from all different walks of life and, and different backgrounds that were able to kick it in, in the name of, of a good time. So, um, as I said, we did have an R&B performance right right along the Capitol, which was which is very exciting. We had our visual artists that were actually able to set up in Philosopher's Grove area and were able to connect with different people and talk and sell their product as well. Um, and on the 100 block of State Street, we actually had vendors that were actually uh, part of the economic development program that the city is is is, is helping uh, sponsor. So we were very thankful for that. Um, yeah had people in the streets. Uh, we had a good reception and, and people were actually out and we were thankful that, that our city police were able to be there and they weren't there in a pressure situation. They were able to, able to just kick it. So I, I was pretty excited about that as well. As I said, this is a, this is a program that's part of the Greater Madison Music City Project. Uh, what we are trying to do is create, like I said, the idea of having more accessible spaces to everyone in our city. Uh, with that being said, we have to thank all of our sponsors. There's a number of sponsors, Urban Community Arts Network, the City of Madison, of course, uh, Synergy Coworking, Coworking Networking, American Family, Madison Community Foundation, Dane Arts, Destination Madison, Madison Arts Commission, Downtown Madison, all of us, Ujama, uh, Great Dane, Latino Chamber of Commerce, 107 State, WORT, uh, DMI, and Tito's Vodka. So, thank you. Thank you, Rob. And uh, I believe the next one is tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night uh, it's the Orquesta Salsol del Mad featuring DJ Chamo. 
I hope to see you all out there. It's going to be a great time and goes through October 8th. So lots of opportunities uh, for you to get out and listen to some great music, see some great vendors, um, buy some great art, uh, and have a good time. All right, uh, just a few things to go through from me today. I'll start with uh, the uh, reopening of in-person city services. Obviously, uh, many of our services have been open throughout the entire pandemic, but we are starting to have folks back in offices and uh, available for walk-up service. Um, the highlight this week is that the Madison Senior Center is open. They opened on the 13th. They will be offering services Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 9 to 1230 uh, through August 1st, and then uh, effective on August 2nd, they'll go back to their pre-COVID operating hours. If you need more information, you can visit cityofmadison.com slash senior dash center or call 608-266-6581, or you can email seniorcenter at cityofmadison.com. Really happy the Senior Center is uh, able to open its doors again and, and encourage uh, you to go take advantage of the, all the resources there. Uh, also open now, uh, all of our Madison Police Department district stations are open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on weekdays. Uh, the Madison Water Utility at Olin Ave is open 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. weekdays for limited services. Our Metro Transit Public Office at 1101 East Washington is open. And this building, the Madison Municipal Building, is open generally 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. on weekdays. And you can find things like human resources, our transportation office, um, uh, and then also uh, housing operations. I'll note that housing operations is closed on Fridays. Uh, many other departments, um, so building inspection zoning are available uh, by appointment, uh, economic development also available by appointment. Um, over in the city county building, the clerk, the treasurer, engineering, the assessor's office, and uh, parks, I think, are all open for walk-up services. You just need to stop at the concierge uh, on your way in. And many, uh, if not most, of our other city appointments are open by appointment. Um, so all this information is available on the website. Um, basically, if you need something from the city, we are here for you um, and likely able to do that in person as well. If you need more information about uh, reopening plans or in-person services, um, you can uh, visit cityofmadison.com slash news, and there is a press release. Or, of course, you can follow the city on social media, and uh, we are posting much more information there. Um, just a few highlights uh, of the past couple of weeks. I want to make sure people are aware that we released a new design for the bus rapid transit stations on State Street designed to address business concerns. Um, these stations are much smaller and will have a less of an impact on storefronts. Um, we're happy to be able to accommodate those needs and hopeful that we can move this project forward uh, in a way that benefits everybody. Um, we also, I'm very happy to announce that we uh, received as a city a silver What Works Cities certification uh, for our use of data. And I want to thank our data team uh, who are primarily responsible for making that happen. I'm also happy to announce that I have uh, appointed Matt Tucker as our new city building inspection director. Congratulations, Matt. Uh, glad to keep you on Team City in a new role. Um, also want to make sure that people know that we have some information sessions coming up about the city budget and the American Rescue Plan Act allocation. Um, so first of all, we have a new website that specifically covers the American Rescue Plan Act allocation for the city of Madison, and that is cityofmadison.com slash ARPA. Um, and that has and will have even more information about our allocation and the process uh, and reporting uh, that we need to do to the federal government. Uh, so I encourage you, if you're interested in, in how we're spending our allocation from that federal government, to check that out. Um, there's a lot of information there, and there will be more over time. Um, I'd also invite everyone to attend one of the information sessions that we're having on this. They will take place July 22nd at 4.30 and July 27th at 4. 
Uh, the same information will be covered in both sessions, so you only need to go to one. And if you can't make either of those times, we are going to record the sessions and make them available so you can watch them at a later date. Uh, just briefly, the uh, plan as adopted by the City Council uh, for the use of our ARPA dollars uh, is to address five priority areas, violence prevention and youth engagement, homeless support, affordable housing, emerging needs, and economic development. And again, much more information including dollar amounts and specific programs is available on the website. Uh, I also want to update folks on the work to uh, slow traffic and make East Washington more safe. Not a single traffic death is acceptable in the city of Madison or frankly anywhere. Um, so our staff are working hard to do everything that we can to make East Washington quarter safer for everyone. It is uh, part of the state highway system, so we uh, do need to work with the state on many uh, things uh, over the long term, but we're hopeful to partner with them on safety improvements. Um, some of the things that we have done already include high visibility crosswalk markings, uh, the pedestrian flashing beacons, speed boards, and additional signage. Uh, we're also working on installing bollards at uh, the Livingston intersection to protect pedestrians better. Our long-term goal is to better accommodate pedestrians, transit users, and bicycles on East Washington Ave. Um, but we are just getting started to do uh, the things that we can do immediately to make the quarter safer while we work on uh, longer-term solutions. I also want to note that the uh, Madison Police Department is has uh, significantly stepped up enforcement in the corridor, uh, particularly at night and on weekends. Uh, just on Monday, MPD stopped 51 reckless drivers. Um, so if you are out driving East Wash, um, you need to slow down and be careful because uh, they are out there and they will stop people who are driving too fast or recklessly in the corridor. Um, we do need everyone's help to make progress here and each of our daily choices makes a difference, particularly when you get behind the wheel and drive on our city streets. We need you to slow down, pay attention, and look out for each other. We are all in this together so let's all work to change our safety culture and reset our expectations about how to be safe on our streets. Speaking of streets, a few notes on road reconstructions. Uh, we are starting work on West Washington Avenue from Bedford to Broome. Uh, that actually started on Monday. The project is expected to be complete in November. Um, we also have street closures coming up Felland Road uh, starting at 7. Uh, oh, no, that was yesterday. Never mind. Uh, Nelson Road on the 17th of July will be closed, fully closed between High Crossing and Felland for paving. Uh, that's one day. Um, sorry, the Felland Road closure between Lean Road and Burke Road will be going through mid-October. Um, if you need more information on uh, re street construction or road closures, you can visit citymadison.com slash engineering, uh, and there's a projects page that you can look at each individual project and find out much more information. In the bad news front, our food scrap recycling program is ending July 17th, um, and we will be closing uh, the drop-off sites, unfortunately. So after that date, if you had been using the food scraps program, I would encourage you to start either your own home composting system um, or to look at some of the available private services um, that do composting. We had to stop this program because the, we were taking the food scraps to a biodigester um, and they uh, are no longer allowing us to take food scraps to them. They are, are shifting um, to another feedstock. So very uh, unfortunate, but um, not much we can do about it. In the meantime, though, I do encourage you to do everything you can to reduce food waste. Um, there's a number of things you can do, and you can find out more at cityofmadison.com slash foodscraps um, to learn how you can reduce 
waste of edible food, make the most of what's in your refrigerator, um, and then dispose of what you have to uh, in the most environmentally friendly way. All right. And we will, of course, be looking uh, in the future to bring uh, not just food scrap program back, but uh, hopefully a full-on composting program for the city, something that uh, we've wanted to do for a long time. All right, now I'm going to go through some quick community resources that uh, folks should take advantage of if they are in need. First of all, I will remind you, publichealthmdc.com. If you are not yet vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Uh, Lots of options there, and you can find out more on the website. If you uh, need help with accessing housing or food or medical care um, or other services in our community, your best bet is to call 211 or to text your zip code to 898-211. That gets you to the United Way. They will help you connect with resources in our community, uh, including uh, health coverage if you need it. So if you don't have health insurance, you can still get it through the federal marketplace at healthcare.gov. Um, if you call 211, they can help talk you through that process, or you can visit wiscovered.com. Um, we also, ha- also have locally the Health Connect program that can help uh, pay your premiums uh, if you meet certain eligibility criteria. Again, call 211 about that. And if you need internet access to visit any of the websites that I've said today, our local libraries have computers available for folks to use. And you can call 266-6300 to set up an appointment or visit your local library. All of these resources are posted at citymadison.com. Click on the community resources link for much more information. And I also encourage you to subscribe to my blog at citymadison.com slash mayor slash blog. We cover a lot of these things uh, there. Last but not least, uh, upcoming meetings. Uh, Today at 5, the Landlord-Tenant Issues Committee will meet. Monday the 19th uh, at 5, there's a joint meeting of the Transportation Policy and Planning Board and the Transportation Commission. Tuesday, July 20th at 4.30, the Common Council Executive Committee meets, and then at 6.30, the Common Council will meet. Wednesday, July 21st at 4.30, the Board of Public Works. At 5, the Economic Development Committee, and at 5.30, the Alcohol License Review Committee. Thursday, the 22nd at 4.30, the Housing Strategy Committee, and at 5, the Disability Rights Commission. Monday, the 26th, at 4.30, the Finance Committee, at 5, the Landmarks Commission, and at 5.30, Plan Commission. And Tuesday, the 27th, at 4.30, the Water Utility Board meets. Wednesday, the 28th, at 2.30 p.m., the Committee on Aging will meet. At 4.30, the Urban Design Commission, and at 5, the Transportation Commission will meet. And our next briefing will be Thursday, July 29th, at 11 a.m. That is what I have for today. Uh, Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see if we have any questions. Mayor, we have one question, and it's for you. Okay. It's fairly long. The city is pursuing solutions on several levels regarding providing services for residents experiencing homelessness, a permanent men's shelter, pursuing a site for a temporary management encampment, and looking at a site for another tiny village. How do you feel about the progress the city is making on these three things, and how supportive are you of a city-sanctioned outdoor living situation? Yeah, that's a great question. We are working on a number of fronts on the issue of homelessness, and um, I actually feel quite hopeful. Uh, We are evaluating multiple sites for a permanent men's shelter, um, I had the opportunity to, to tour Carmenta, which is, excuse me, Shield of Hope, uh, which is uh, currently our, our family shelter. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been having a conversation about a permanent uh, purpose-built women's shelter as well. Um, so I feel positive about those conversations moving forward. Um, we are also pursuing additional sites for tiny house uh, villages, um, and 
I think we'll be making some progress on that. Um, obviously, need to be working with the nonprofits in the community that want to manage those. That's a key piece. Similarly, on the question of uh, campgrounds or encampments, I think the key piece is partnering with uh, folks in the nonprofit community and service providers to manage that situation. We've had some very positive conversations. I'm hopeful about that. I'm also hopeful about identifying sites um, that uh, we can, I don't think we're going to make everyone happy, but that at least we can all agree would be a better solution than what we've got going on now. Um, so I think, uh, I know people are frustrated. I know that uh, people feel like we need to be moving quicker, but this is a very complicated issue. We are moving as fast as we can, and I think that we are close to some solutions. So I think uh, I am quite hopeful uh, about getting us into a better situation in the long term. Anything else? That's it for today. All right. Thank you all for tuning in, and thanks, everybody, for being here. As always, we'll see you in a couple weeks.